welcome everyone so today we are going through the web visa web visa dev webinar where we will see like how you can implement a message level encryption in vana using the java and the c sharp moving ahead so what you will what you are going to learn during the session is like to how to enable the message level encryption for your api so we'll start with the basic api like oct and the query where you will see from the vdp how you can enable it how you can write the code and all these things then we will see like how you can get the proper credentials for the mle on the vdp which is present definitely present on the vdp how you can implement the post and the get method using the mle then we will see like how you can encrypt and decrypt so as you know like message level encryption is all about encryption or decryption encryption done by client decryption decrypted by the visa and decrypt, encryption by the visa has to be decrypted by the client so we'll see how you can encrypt and decrypt in the both ways then we are going to use the java and the c sharp code snippet to implement the same and if you have any question and answers related to the presentation or during or related to any api or message level encryption then you can easily or you can post it as or you can ask during the session itself <clears throat> so there are some webinar housekeeping so you can use a you q and a button on the presentation screen itself to send the questions to us so one of the size resource one of the resource from the team will pick it up and give it the answers to you the resource widgets will show you all the links we were going to during the webinar like the vdp link how you can find a vdp mle encryption decryption mm -hmm. decry decryption code and all the steps to implement mle what we are going to cover in the webinar then we are recording the session as well and we will be emailing you the link to you so that whenever needed you can go through once again <clears throat> moving ahead so this is the review from a previous webinar what we have covered related to the visa direct so this like you can go through the links if you have not covered it in the previous one it's like what is the visa direct how you can implement it visa direct query api and a simple use case like if you want to send 100 usd from the bank account to the visa card how you can do it using the push fund transaction api as well as the query api you can use it further to find it out what is the status of the transaction using the transaction identifier and the acquiring bin so this is a, just a recap of what we have covered in the previous webinars the links are here itself so you can go through if you want <clears throat> so as this webinar is about the message level encryption which is one just one step ahead of what we have implemented in the visa direct like push funds and the pull funds or the query because it's it will be taking the same api and will be encrypting and decrypting the api <clears throat> using the mle so assumption we assume something like we you already know how to run the well hello world get method you already know like push fun api like oct without the mle at least and the use case we are going to encrypt implement it today in the today's seminar like we will will be encrypting the payload using the message level encryption so we'll be starting from the scratch like how you can enable it on the vdp how to download the credentials how you can encrypt write the code how you can where you can find the code on the vdp once how you can encrypt it how you can send it so all these flows we will be implement doing it going it through in the this webinar so a brief about the mle so mle is is a message level encryption which is basically for the visa direct apis which is provides as an on security what is you are sending to the visa and the visa sending back to you <clears throat> okay going through the resources link so resources related to the hello world or java you can find all the community urls visa developer how you can run the sample code using the java language there is a community as well where you can post mle related stuff there are some few webinars which we have done in the past like done a visa direct transaction using python in one hour or less so there are here are the links you can go through there is one more link like how to run the query api in the visa direct transaction so you can just go through all these links and you can find a nice documentation how to implement it <clears throat> okay so that's it's about a brief about the on a documentation type or we can say theoretical stuff let's go to the live coding and before going to the live coding let's let us see like where you can find the mle related stuff on the vdp so <clears throat> here is a nice vdp link or the community link 
prepared by one of the visa colleague which you which can help you to implement the java sample code using the mle so before implementing the java sample code for mle it will give you like the basic things you have to do on the vdp so first of all is like the first step is to implement enable the mle so enabling the mle is nothing it's just to you have to go to the project for example i assume this is a simple vd project you have created for the visa direct now you want to implement the mle on this one so just for example i will just do on the enable this one so i just have to toggle this one and this let's see okay so the mle is enforced on this one so now the code when you are sending the call to the visa you have to send is an encrypted payload otherwise it will not work going back to the documentation so enable the apis once you enable the apis then you have to generate the for the message level encryption you have to generate a key id so this is the second step so you have to generate the key id and you have to download the credentials so let's go through the vdp like how you can do it <clears throat> so go to the credential step go down here you can see the encryption and the decryption okay i let me move it to this project <clears throat> moving to the encryption and the decryption there here you can see the mandatory key certificates for the message level encryption so if you want to search for the message level encryption also then you can find it here so here is a button which is generate the key id so once you click on this button it will generate you a key id here you can so when you implement the mle so there is a one key id is required and also you have to submit the csr which is like same in the same way when you are generating the project on the vdb so Hi, let's click this button uh, uh, i think i guess uh, you need to share your screen or maybe it's loading slowly uh, because we are okay. getting a uh, few feedbacks from mm -hmm. the folks that the uh, screen is loading slowly i think maybe you need to go back yeah Okay, because people can't see the code. Okay, let me know. Let me see the slide. No. Thanks, everyone, for the feedback. Okay. So everyone can see my screen now. Arpita, ah, uh, yeah, Arpita, I I can see the screen. You can move on. Okay, so apologies for like I was not aware that it was not showing up. Anyway, so going further, so let me move it one step before. So we enabled Emily, then we are going to the credential step to generate the credentials. So when we say the credentials for the Emily, there is one credentials you have to generate like key ID, shared secret, sorry, server certificates and the client certificates. So how we are going to do this? Like we'll go to the VDP. <clears throat> we will go to the credential section. once you go to the credential section you can go down straight down you can find the encryption part and this is a message level encryption so let me generate it here <clears throat> so you will see the screen click on the generate key id so Just I just refresh my screen. Something happens. It's loading. Going to credential step. Okay. So when I generated the key ID, it's generated. So key ID is generated. Now I have to generate the CSR. So and generating the CSR is the same step like you have you have did like when you are creating a project. So there are two ways. Like you can generate the CSR default CSR, which is supported only in the sandbox version. Once you move it to the higher version, you have to submit your own CSR. so assuming you like you know you are working in the sandbox so i will generate a csr for me so in this case the visa will generate a csr <clears throat> and ask me to download a private key so that's the most important step so you have to download this private key and you have to save it at a place because this is the key you are going to use it whenever you are decrypting the payload from the visa so i confirm I downloaded moving next i can see the csr generated as well as client server client encryption certificate and the server encryption certificate so these two certificates we it will give you a step to download we will see in the future how we can use it 
So moving ahead to the same documentation page, we will see like this one. So we have done all the steps. We have generated a CSR. We have downloaded the private key, which is the one, download the server certificates, download the client certificates. Now you have four things with you. One is the MLE enabled, and then you have the client server server encryption certificate. You have the key ID. The key ID is nothing. This is the one that this is we call as a key ID, which has to be passed in the header when you are sending a MLE code, MLE call to the visa. You have the certificate private key as well, which you have downloaded when you have generated the CSR. So this is about the brief stuff. We will move on to the how you can create a Java sample code for the MLE. So the, here are some basic commands which you can use to generate the Maven artifact, or you can go through it directly in IntelliJ and create a Maven project and add these libraries, Maven POM projects and the Nimbus Lab. So this is for XML conversion. And after this, what you have to do, you just have to go to the code and download this file. So one second, I will just clear my downloads folder. So you have to download this file. Download this file and directly use it. So I have for a convenience to during this webinar, I already downloaded. So this is the same file I downloaded. This is the same file, which we have got it from the VDP. The only stuff you have to change, it is to the key store and the key store password. So I assume like if you have already run the push run API or the query API, you know how to create a P P12 file or the key store. So you have to provide the key store path and the password. You have to use the user ID and the password for the VDP project. Then you have to provide the MLE client certificate path, private key path. So this is the private key path which you have downloaded when you are generating the CSR. This is the server certificate which we have to use when you are gen when you are sending the for encrypting the payload before sending it to the visa. And this is the key uh, ID. Arpit, uh, so, so sorry to interrupt you. Can you please share your IntelliJ ID because I can see the browser only. Okay, sorry, my mistake. I will okay. just share it again. Yeah, let me know, please. Like once you can see my IntelliJ screen. Everyone can see my screen. The yeah, yeah, window. yeah, yeah, okay. we can see more. Yeah, we can see more. Thank, 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 thank you for confirming. Okay, so this is the same file what I have downloaded from the VDP. So what what I have downloaded is after downloading what we have to change. This is the, this is going to the remain the same because we are going to execute on the sandbox. This is the key store path. So once you generate the key store using the Visa Direct Project certificates as well as the project or the what we can say, so sandbox certificates. Once you generate the key path, you have to generate a key store. You can just path, supply the part to it. This is the key store password. For me, it's changed it. Whatever you want to keep it, then you can use it here. Then this is the user ID and the password. This is the same for the VDP, which I've used it. Now, next comes the MLE client private key path. So this is the same private key which we have downloaded when we are when we were submitting the CSR on the VDP. So I supplied this part to the PEM file. This is the server public certificate, which is used to encrypt the payload. And this is the key ID, which you can find it on the VDB, as we have discussed a few minutes before. So these all things you have to adjust it, and just change it, and then finally run the code. So let's go through the window, like what it does, and finally we will jump into the code. So first, it's OCT encrypted payload. So it encrypted the payload, and encrypted payload will look like this. So this it's calling the push fund transaction, the post call and success. And this is the encrypted response from Visa. And once we got the encrypted response, we decrypted it. We decrypted and this is a decrypted response. And this is the end of the OCT call. So what we did next, we use the transaction identifier, the same transaction identifier and use the query API to know the all the details. So going next, what we encrypted using the query API, we send an encrypted response, encrypted call. This is a query API call. 
we got the encrypted response and once we got the encrypted response we decrypted it using the mle private key and this is the end of the code moving to the code snippet what we executed like how it flows so this line is like about the encryption of the code like this is the in get encrypted payload if we go jump inside this so this method is nothing it's just using the jw it's generating the jw header using the payload what is the payload we have provided and generating the rsa public key so this public key here we are using the client certificates oh, sorry server certificates so we are using the server certificates if you can see here so we are using the server certificates and we are generating the public key and using the public key we are sending the payload to the visa so this is an encrypted payload all this you can find it on the vdp also once you have down once you can download this file you can see in detail so during the webinar i was just going to cover in the brief like how we can what's actually we are doing it and this is the invoking api path where we invoked it and we got the encrypted response from the visa so now we have the encrypted response we will use a mle client private key path or client private key to decrypt the payload so this is the decrypting payload and to decrypt the payload using the from the file what we have with us we find it out the private key rsa private key here so this is the code you you have to use the rsa private key to find out the private key and that's it so simple and short then you can just this speed of this piece of code is required to push into the mm. mle code so next is the transaction query the same thing it's the same thing nothing else the only the parameters and the query call is just changed so instead of the post it's changed to get and the instead of the payload direct payload we are changing to the query parameters so that's it through the code okay and one more thing this is this, what we have downloaded from the btp is the complete working code and that is available in different languages we have in, in most of the major languages like java c sharp python and all this but still if you want to un implement in different languages which is not available on the visa so we will shortly go through the code like what is the encryption logic how it actually works and which is available on the vdp so i'm sh sh stopping my screen and sharing my screen again to switch back to the vdp portal okay so so this is a link like how to run the java sample code for the visa so first link if you will find it out there is an encryption guide so basics behind the encryption how actually the encryption works so this is about the encryption stuff like what does a client certificate encryption certificate means so if you want to read in detail you can just go through it if you have any queries related to it you can ask it during the webinar after the webinar or you can email us to developer@visa.com so these are the what we have discussed like configuring emily this is the key id why it is required csr generation why it is required how you can generate your own csr using the emily generate the certificates what is the e certificate means what it visa does how you can generate it again so we have documented mle controls so mandatory mle and the optional mle so after this year i think that it will be mandatory modes right now it's an optional mle so there these are the two things we have described here so you can optionally switch off here optionally on enforced and this is a, again you can find a brief documentation how to implement the mle in the api calls what we have documented in a previous links so these are the code snippets which we just saw in the intellij it is node js python c sharp and also if you will go through go on the visa developer directly on the dashboard directly on the dashboard then along with the hello world samples we recently included the message level encryption sample codes also so once you download this you will see the mle sample codes and let me share it again okay 
okay so this is the downloads window so you can just click it over you can just see like all the languages c sharp go java node js php postman code as well python ruby soap ui stuff how you can run it through the soap ui all the stuffs are documented and nice readme file where you can find the steps to run it again and if you will go on the languages level so you can find out okay this is the code this is a source main java go these are push one and this is the same file what we have executed so all this stuff is here and this is all about java next my colleague samreen would be taking over to explain you on the c sharp yeah samreen can you please take it over i'm just yes. stopping my screen okay thank you arpit hello everyone hi this is samreen i will let me start sharing my screen then i will show you how to execute mle using c sharp just a sec let me just share my screen So, so as arpit has already explained as a first step what we have to do is go and download the sample codes from the vdp application so once you will download the sample codes you will have different folders for each of these languages like for c sharp there will be a folder there will be a folder for java golang and under each of these folders along with the code you will have a readme file now in that readme file we have a link to a vdp article once you click on that article you will get a step by step guide lines plus the screenshots on everything which arpit has already explained to you but it is there in the document form and the, and, and here you, you will see how to generate the mle keys how to execute it and all these steps along with the screenshots so in so in each of these folders you have a readme file plus the sample code so i did the same i went to the vdp project i downloaded the c sharp code and i went to my id and i just went to file i went to open open the project solution and op open this project now this is my c sharp code which i have taken from the sample codes which i have downloaded now as you are already aware that mle is implemented on top of the existing mtls security so the only thing which you will have to do once you download this sample code is to first set up your mtls things like mtls authorization credentials your certificates and all that stuff and the next part will be to set up the mle keys so let's start so as a first step you, you will have these user id and password which you have taken from the vvdp dashboard in the readme file you you will have the screenshot from where you have to take this information and similarly you will have the mtls certificate for that once you have this done then go to the mle part so in the mle there are three things the first thing is the key, key id part this is your mle key id which you will pass in the header in the http header as well as the jwe header i will explain you when i will explain you the code second thing is the mle public certificate second thing is the M mle certificate which you will use to encrypt the request which will be sent out to visa third thing is the private key now this private key will be used by the client to de decrypt the encrypted re response so once you have all these keys and all that stuff ready you, you, your code is all fine and you are good to go i have done the same thing i downloaded the same code i have already set up the information now let me walk you through the code so as a first step i am executing the oct transaction let me show you the method where what i am doing here so as a first step i have taken the request payload from the vdp explorer itself the only thing i am doing is i am changing the variable for the local date and the transaction time i am putting it in a variable and putting it in the request body here is my request url or the endpoint which i need to execute which is the uh, oct transaction now let's go to the next step so here what i am doing is i am encrypting this request body let's go, go go to this method and see what i am doing here okay so here is my request body which contain the sample payload for, for the oct transaction here is my mle certificate which i have already put it up in the beginning it will be used to encrypt the request payload okay so now i have my request body i have my public key certificate which i will use which i will use to encrypt the certificate now to create the jwe in encrypted data we need to pass these two things in the header first is the kkid field which is nothing but the mle key id which which we have all already set it up 
second is the iit field which is the unix time in milliseconds so we have said the, these two things in the header we have the request body and we have the mle public key certificate and with all this information we have created a jwe encrypted payload so once we have our request data and all, already encrypted let's go back so once we have our in, encrypted request i will invoke the api let me just in let's me let's just go here and see what i am doing here yeah so here i'm doing nothing i've just taken the encrypted request body i'm just invoking the oct endpoint the only thing i am doing as i have told you in the request header i'm passing the mle key key id other details are same as for the non mle key so here i'm passing the authorization header which will be used for your authorization details the the extra thing which we do for the mle is to pass this header in the in the request header the that the that rest all the stuff remains same so let's go back where we were okay so now i have my request body encrypted i have my request url and i have invoked the oct endpoint now once i invoke the oct endpoint i get all the response in the encrypted form now as a client i will have to decrypt that so i have another function which will decrypt that let's go to that function and see see here what i am doing so here i have taken the encrypted payload i have taken my mle private key which i will use to decrypt this payload so this will give me the, the same payload in the decrypted format let's go back so here then in this transaction i had i, I get the decrypted response let's go back from where we started so i have invoked the oct transaction and 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 now i have the decrypted response now from that decrypted response i have taken out a transaction identifier now this transaction identifier i will pass as a parameter to the transaction api okay so from the decrypted response i have taken this transaction identifier now i am go going to invoke another api where i will pass this transaction api uh, where i will pass this transaction identifier let me go to this what i am doing here it's the same thing the only thing is like in this case it's not the http verb post it is the http verb get so in this case there is no request body since there is no request body so it means we we, we to do if you don't need to encrypt the request the only thing we need to do is that in the do mutual auth call where we are invoking the api we will pass this request header we will pass this request header called key id now this request header will inform the api okay now the the response which will be sent will be in the encrypted format okay so let's go back from where we started yeah so here at this point we will get the decrypted response so this was about the flow how we are executing it in the c sharp as i have already mentioned once you will download it from the vdp the only two things you would have to do is first set up it as per the mutual ssl and the second part will will be to enter your mle things it has been already explained by arpit plus we have it we have it properly documented in in the readme file how you will take these keys now let me execute my code and share my console window let me just just a second let me share my console yeah. so here's my console window which showed me okay so this is what i executed i executed the oct transaction first so this was the end point of my oct transaction second in this you can see the encrypted request which was sent by the client to, to the visa here i have printed all the response headers and everything i got a 200 here i am printing the decrypted response and here i have taken the transaction identifier put it in a variable and that same transaction identifier i am passing in the ne next api which is the transaction query now in this transaction query i am executing it here is the end point for this and as it is not a post call it is a http verb get call there is no request body in this so we don't have any encrypted request data here so now now we'll move on so here is the decrypted response which we have got from this transaction query 
So we have shown you how to execute MLE using C Sharp, and we have invoked two APIs which are dependent on each other. First, I have invoked the OCT API, which provided you the transaction identifier and all the details, and then I have invoked another API, which used that tra transaction identifier to get the details of the API. I mean, okay. So that's it from my side from the C Sharp side. Let's move on to the question answers. If you have some questions, please go ahead and post it in the question answer section and we'll answer you. So, yeah, I think, uh, hi, Samreen, thank you for the details. Uh, hi, everyone, this is Gautam. Uh, so meanwhile, we are getting more questions. Uh, I will try to answer for some of the questions which were raised during the webinar uh, for everyone's awareness. So we have a uh, first question. Uh, could you share the manual where we can see, find all the things explained so far? So we shall share all the recordings and with the links with you uh, after this webinar. In fact, we are recording this webinar and you can refer it for the uh, later, uh, later for other uh, purposes. And the second question was, uh, I understand everything is Java so far. In case of questions, when trying the samples, uh, is there any email we can use for the questions? A very good question, actually. As Arvita has shown you, there are um, multiple uh, language we, languages we are covering uh, with the sample code. But still, if you have some issues or any queries, you can always send an email to developer at visa.com. Yeah. Okay, so I also have one question where somebody is asking how to get the API source. So the APIs or the sample codes which we have explained just now, so you can download it from the VDP itself. Okay, so you, you will get all these APIs you can download and they are language specific and you can get the read, read me file as well. I hope that answers your question. Okay, I will take the next one. Uh, this is a question from Alexi. Uh, from Techno. Uh, sorry, probably I missed the moment when you shared the location of the sample projects. I think, uh, Samreen, one more time you can share your screen and show it like where the sample projects are lined. So it will be easy for folks to pick it up from there. Arp Arpit, can you Arpit? pick it up? Yeah, because uh, Arpit like already has it open. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to share one sec. Yeah, Alexi, on the, can you see my screen? It's a VDP dashboard. It's loading slowly. Yes, okay. I think we can see that. Yeah, we can see. Okay. So Alexi, this is a, once you go to the VDP dashboard, you will go down, you can si find the message level encryption sample code. So you can search with the string also on the measure. So once you click this button, it will give you a zip. One second. Oh, I was logged out, sorry. So once you log in, this is a dashboard page. You go down, search message level encryption and just click this one. So this will give you a zip file. So when you click on this zip file, you will see the MLE sample codes where you can find in all the languages. And inside that, there is a readme as well where you can see like how to implement it and how to use it. Okay, anything else? So if there are no questions, we can move ahead uh, by closing this one. And uh, 
uh, if folks have few uh, other question or even after the webinar you can send an email at developer at visa dot com uh nice um, any, another question came from uh, rodrigo uh, swift code uh yes i think uh, you can send an email to us and we can provide you the samples around that definitely in case you guys are interested uh, of course um, send us email on developer at uh, visa.com and we can of course add additional languages as well not just swift um, please uh, send us email and we'll be more than happy um, to help you i can see one more question from johan and what he's asking is do we use the pen certificates or we have to or we have to like convert them to some certificates so it, it depends on the language which you are using like if you will be using java you would have to of course create a jks file or the key key store for that if you are using c sharp it would be converted into dot p12 format so it is something which depends on the language which you are using but you cannot absolutely use the certificate as it is one question around uh, golang and uh, the answer is uh, i believe we have the source code provided if i'm not mistaken and in case we don't we're going to of course uh, add it as well yes okay, so we so have Johan another question has asked, i think uh, so, sorry got Actually, That's Johan okay. has asked one more question. He's asking for the C sharp. So for the C sharp, it it would be in the format dot p one two, and in the readme file which you will get, it will be explained step by step how to generate that certificate in the dot p p one two format. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Okay, so we have another question from Farhan. Uh, is it explained in the docs how to generate this public certificate? Yes, if you will go on the VDP, actually on the encryption guide, it can show you how you can generate uh, public certificates. And uh, there are two ways actually. You can uh, Visa can generate the C, uh, complete certificate for you, uh, like, like private key and public certificate, which Arpit has shown us just now. Or there is another option. Actually, you can generate your own CSR and private key, and you can send the CSR certificate signing request. to visa and we will sign those certificate and will provide you the public keys actually so all the details uh, have been given on the portal uh, even uh, with the uh, commands which you need to use using the open ssl or key tool and we have one more question actually it's not a question from uh, a request from cesar uh, please send me the examples uh, on two different emails uh, so cesar basically uh, before watching this webinar you would have uh, requested or registered using your email i will make sure to send all the details uh, along with the uh, recording of this webinar uh, on that email id thanks i cannot see more questions coming so i think we are good <clears throat> let's do fast uh, <clears throat> let's close it up so in case of course you guys yeah. are interested uh, if you can send us email on developervisa.com and as a token of appreciation we can send you a nice beautiful bottle with um, visa def uh, water bottle it's a really nice very handy and uh, again let us please uh, now how can we help you in case you interested in some additional webinars uh, uh, or experience in some um, difficulties please email us developer@visa.com and this uh, would conclude the rest the uh, end of this webinar we don't have any more questions so i really appreciate uh, 
your time and um, thank you so much.